This show is brought to you by these happy patrons. Hey there, you beautiful people. Welcome to the BNPR show, an epic celebration of stylized rendering. The highlights for today's show. First, pixel perfect textures for pixel art. Second, the full water cycle. Clouds, rain, lakes, and waterfalls. Don't go chasing those. Uh, and third, we announced the winner of the ebook giveaway. A huge show, let's get started. To the news. So we have two free resources we want you to know about. The first is a procedural water texture set by at Kevzin. The download consists of six water shaders running in Eevee. The second download is on bnpr.org's download page. This time we have a two day rain shader by Aquapolo. Both of these downloads will auto animate, just press play. The next piece of news is from at ddadadan3. You may have seen flat pupils and sphere pupils, but have you seen concave ones? Go ogle this one, because concave pupils kind of make more sense. Now the grease pencil can have holes in fills. This is done with the holdout option on the grease pencil material. You might have to get a custom blender build to get this feature, however, but this will be useful. Oh, tutorials. Okay, this one is Pixel Perfect Texture Art by Mortmort. Mort. This video goes in depth for pixel perfect workflow and common pitfalls. The tutorial covers how to model for pixel art, how to UV unwrap the models, and how to texture the models. There's some new information that you have to pay attention to. Number one, set the grid subdivisions to 16 to help you get that power of two texture usually used by pixel art. The scale is set to 0.625. Also set the unit to none. Two, the material is a shadeless texture with an emission shader. Three, UV unwrap the mesh to snap as close as possible to the pixel grid. And there are a few tools to do that. You'll have to watch the video to get into that. Four, for painting, you can do it inside Blender or use external software for pixel art like Asperite. If you do do it inside of Blender, the brush fall off should be squared, set bleed to zero as well. The video also demoed how to handle texture painting for round objects, which don't fit the pixel grid, so be sure to watch that part as well. Pencil Look by Tony Mortino. This tutorial is not entirely shading. Geometry is important here too. The important elements to the pencil look are as follows. One, a hatching shader with various levels of threshold, including shadow and vertex color, to control where the lines appear. Two, the inner lines are UV'd into place, much like the techniques used in Guilty Gear XR. Three, two inverted holes, one for the outline and the other one for the texture displacement. Four, particle geometry strokes on the surface of the mesh. And the end result is perfect when rendered as a still image. Watercolor material by Diego Gangle. The result of this tutorial is of high quality for watercolor. Here are a few of the building blocks. One, the paper texture. In the world material, set the paper texture to window coordinates. Make the paper texture a node group for later use. Also, isolate the world color from everything using is camera ray. Two, the general non-light shading. Add the generated vector to the window texture coordinate for noise textures. Lower the noise amount with a multiplier. Add normal vector to get the shape of the object and all those pipe into the Fresnel node. Three, the color edges. Use two color ramps to find the edges. Finally, assemble everything. Add the lighting information from a diffuse and combine with the noise from before. Then multiply the paper texture with the Fresnel output. Then color every stage of the shader. With a bit more tweaking, this will look very watercolorish. Small note, some watercolor can be photorealistic. Grease Pencil Face Rig Part 4 by Level Pixel Level. This is an advanced tutorial. A few key points are, one, head rotation is driven by keyframe using the time offset modifier of a grease pencil animation. Two, eye shape is controlled by a driven lattice from a cast modifier link to an empty. And three, this tutorial also showcases the updated grease pencil masking in Blender, so give it a look. You may just pick up a few things you can use from it. 
Stylized Low Poly Character Workflow by Naval Studios. This showcases the whole workflow and his preferences to create a low poly stylized character. The video covers a lot of things. It's nice to see the whole process in an 11 minute video, instead of the whole video series which could take many hours to finish. Mapping Shading by Epic Knight Studios. This tutorial shows how to bake normals to aid shading. Why would one do that? Isn't editing vertex normals enough? The problem happens when the mesh deforms. When the mesh deforms, the direction of the vertex normals also change. The shading breaks. So there are a few methods to reach the same results, but that is for another tutorial. Procedural Stylized Grass by Mauricio Heberly. This is a simple setup using particle hair. The key point is using the noise texture mixed with wave textures. Then use a turbulence force to animate them. Stylized Grass with Shadow by Lance Barrel. This is a breakthrough in stylized particle grass shadows. Previously, we only had shadeless grass. The particle grass setup is similar to Mauricio's in the earlier tutorial, except these. One, the grass material is set to object texture coordinates. Two, the grass blades must be an object. Three, transfer normal data from the ground plane to the 3D grass blade. Don't forget to enable auto smooth on the grass mesh. Four, turn off the shadow in the grass material. Five, rotate the grass object in the object mode to get it working. The logic is to get the grass particle to only receive shadows from the emitter plane and not from itself. And we heard that beer will make this super simple. Stylized Animated Rain by Southern Shoddy. This 2D rain uses a painted rain texture on a transparent background. That means you have to mix the emission shader with the transparent shader. To isolate the rain color from the influence of the environment shading, is camera ray is used as a factor on a mix node. For the rain animation, animate the position mapping and set it to cyclic. Then place the rain object on multiple planes to get the feel right. This is another method to make stylized rain. It is simpler compared to the one done by Aquapolo as seen earlier. And here is a chain of tutorials by Christophe Didane, a great contributor to the NPR community. The first tutorial is Stylized Waterfall. The elements of the waterfall are 1. River Flow Ripple. This is made from a Veroni texture with a color ramp as the threshold. 2. Edge Ripple. This is the same Veroni texture with a color ramp with an addition of a spherical gradient as a mask. 3. Water Splashes. This is a sphere object with a displace modifier and a Veroni texture as the displacement map. An empty is used to animate it. The material is a shadeless Veroni texture. 4. Wave Ripple. This is a ring wave texture with a spherical mask gradient. Then add a bit of distortion in the rings. Finally, color all the color ramps and add transparency and the waterfall is ready for animation. The second tutorial is Water Caustic and Sparkle Effect. This is the surface ripple of water. The building elements are 1. 2D Still Water Ripple. This is a 2D F1 Veroni texture, subtracting a 2D Smooth F1 Veroni texture. 2. 3D Moving Water Ripple. This is made from a 3D F1 Veroni texture, subtracting a 3D Smooth F1 Veroni texture. 3. Water Distortion. This is made from two Musgrave textures with a different scale inserted into the Y direction of the Veroni texture mapping node. 4. Transparent Water Surface. Like his other videos, invert the ripple texture, then mix the emission shader with the transparent shader. 5. The Bottom Layer Caustic. First add a river bottom texture, then blend it with the ripple using a soft light blend node. 6. Sparkle. To add sparkles, add a texture map to the window coordinates with an alpha mask, then animate the sparkles. And just like that, you can make lakes, slow streams, and ponds. The third tutorial by Kristoff is the ocean shader. This is for huge ocean scenes and relatively easy to make. The building elements here are, one, the ripple glow reflection, AKA the stipples. Since they are small, 
This is made from a Veroni texture scaled to tiny circles. A gradient sphere is used as the mask. Then, mix with the node texture to add variation to the stipple. 2. Smooth gradient. This is done using a linear gradient with a color ramp, mixed with the noise texture to add variation. 3. Reflection. You need a bump map with a noise texture driving the normal. The reflections are controlled by the specular in the principled BSDF. To be able to see the reflection, turn on screen space reflections in the render settings in Eevee. The fourth tutorial by Christoph is the simple 2D clouds. Clouds are made from a huge plane mesh. A 3D noise texture with a color ramp threshold is used. Then set up transparency. The cloud shading is a position offset of the same noise setup piped into an emission shader. Then a color ramp provides the colors. And the fifth tutorial by Christoph is a more advanced cloud inspired by Ghibli. And here are the building elements. One, the general shape of the cloud. Use a quadratic sphere gradient with an object texture mapping. Then add a vector curve to get the rough shape of the cloud. Use a Veroni texture for the cloud details. Then duplicate the Veroni with bigger sizes to get different levels of detail. Two, refining the cloud shape. Link the gradient mapping from the first part to all the vector inputs of the three Veroni textures. This will shape the cloud much better and provide a depth perspective. 3. Cloud distortion is done using a noise texture on the scale of the mapping nodes. 4. Cloud shading. For shading the bottom of the cloud, multiply a sphere mask on it. Distort the shadow using a noise texture like before. 5. Adding 3D volume. Use another gradient texture on the overall of the cloud to shape the cloud to look more 3D. 6. The highlight of the cloud is put at the end of the shading portion using a color ramp. Finally, to randomize the cloud, use the location of the object in the mapping node of the Veroni textures. And you have painterly clouds. Also, go watch Lightning Boy Studio's cloud tutorial. They pretty much use the same techniques. There's a lot to digest in this huge set of tutorials. Be sure to hit the show notes to find them all. Now to taste some beer updates. Since the last show, malt, the back end of beer, has improved a lot. We have the jump flood algorithm for line art. This makes drawing very thick lines over 10 pixel thick lines super fast. We also have a more advanced line shader. This is more of a brute force version and the quality is really good. You can control the depth threshold, normal threshold, and line thickness. Lines detected from depth and normal can have independent thicknesses. You can also change the line thickness of the object boundary. This is much like external contour line type in freestyle. To get that line thickness fading with the distance, we have a world space line thickness. Next, Beer now has shadows for point and sun lamps. You can control the quality of the shadows via the scene tab malt setting. You can change the quality of the shadow with shadow cascades distribution exponent and sample grid size. We also have the Fresnel function in Malt, which means we can make rim lights. We have the rim light angle to control the angle of the rim light and the rim thickness for the thickness, the rim length for the coverage of the rim light along the rim, and rim fall off to make the rim light solid or smooth. Miguel also changed GLM 3D Math Library to PYRR to fix a crashing problem on some of the GPUs. Since this show is assembled a week earlier than the release date, we're sure there may be some new enhancements made to Malt. So what are you waiting for? Go get the latest version. Okay, now the ebook giveaway winner. A few weeks ago, we initiated a book giveaway to our soul-stirring digital color mastery ebook. Today, we're announcing the winner. And that winner is Tenro Blitz. Congrats. Please get in contact with us to claim the ebook. For those of you who did not win, you can find out what the ebook is about on this colorful page and how it can enhance your NPR journey. And now, feast your eyeballs on these artworks.
A Small Robin by Paula Lucas. This has simple solid colors. There are two accented colors among desaturated colors. And one more, which is the white color of the bird's chest. The texture speaks a certain language. Simple floating mesh to indicate the feathers. Since the colors are so nicely planned, no outline is needed. The snappy animation makes the bird feel so alive. And presenting, Dreaming Pupa on a Dying Planet trailer by Negatoro9. Not much to say, just watch. So there we have it, a huge show of NPR greatness. Don't forget to visit the show notes. And this show is brought to you by these awesome people. Please thank them kindly. But before we go, one last question. Have you seen any NPR snow tutorials?